Hi, I'm Ari. And I'm Lily, and welcome to the second season of The Transcript. This week, The Transcript explores what President Trump's suspension of the U.S. refugee program will mean for Northampton, joins the NHS Anime Club for one of their weekly meetings, goes to a Springfield Thunderbirds game, and looks into the role of modern pop political comedy. Northampton was planning to take in 51 refugees, and they were expected to arrive shortly. But since then, President Trump has signed an executive order that suspends the entire U.S. Refugees Admission Program for 120 days. It also indefinitely blocks refugees from Syria, one of the countries we are expecting refugees from. What does this mean for those 51 refugees who were coming to Northampton? Catholic Charities, a nationwide organization with an office in Springfield, was making plans to organize the arrival of these refugees. I talked to Susanna Crolius an employee of the Springfield office, and Bill Dwight, city councilor, about what the original plan for the city was. The State Department had contacted us with um, our first couple of families to tell us who they were. Um, we were preparing to receive them shortly. Uh, and now, as of, the, as of Friday, with this executive order, uh, we, are, we, we won't see these families uh, at least for 120 days. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen between now and, now and then. We, we, everybody is still guessing. Everybody's still trying to figure out what this means. I said we will talk to the community. Let's have community forums to discuss it with them, see if they, how, how likely they are to actually, they, they share in this sentiment, but let's see how deep that sentiment goes. And we had a number of forums, fora, uh, and it turned out the response was enormous. There's, there's 700, at last I heard, up to 700 volunteers signing up. They have more volunteers than they have things to assign them at this point. But clearly there was a very strong community response. But what does President Trump's order mean for these plans? Specifically for Northampton, what it means is that, at least as we understand it right now, uh, we will not receive first families or, or people here in Northampton for at least 120 days. Um, that situation may, may change, but our understanding right now is that there will be no refugees from any country coming in for at least the next 120 days. In terms of uh, seven countries, specific countries, uh, they're, they will not be coming uh, indefinitely to the, US, to the U.S. to be resettled. After learning about the effect of the executive order, I wanted to learn what life can be like for refugees in Western Mass. I sat down with Adam, a Sudanese refugee going to HCC for criminal justice. A year and nine months ago, I started with um, learning English as a second language. So I start from level one to level five and then um, I just finished last semester my level five and I also started to take some of my major classes so uh, and I think time flies really quickly and, and it's really fascinating that how I learned English and basically from understanding nothing and not knowing how to express my feeling or how to even communicate with others and now you know basically talking to you and talking <laughs> to all of you right now is you know is very scary and frightening and also exciting at the same time too. Families break apart just put yourself on those refugees places and see for yourself and you will understand what is what humanity is all about. These people really need love and support and it's really important for us to do something, you know. So that's my message. Hi, I'm Meredith. This week I traveled into Anime Club to find out more about their fan culture. I talked to the president and this is what I learned. I was wondering if you could please explain like a little more about anime. It's a medium of animation that comes from Japan. There are many different genres of anime, just like there are many different genres of film and animation here. Like pretty common genres in anime are like the 
shonen anime, and that's generally like stuff like Naruto, um, Dragon Ball Z, stuff like that. So shonen is generally magic and uh, superhero anime. And then there's shoujo, which is love stories and um, slice of life stuff. There is a genre that's we Americans call magical girls, and they're basically girl superheroes with magical powers, and you get to see their adventures. A pretty good example is Sailor Moon. Anime is also willing to go into things that I feel a lot of Western shows aren't willing to do. Like, for instance, there was a show that came out in the fall it's called Yuri on Ice. It was a homosexual relationship, and it, they portrayed it in a really nice way. That willingness to go into topics that American like show producers would consider taboo is what makes anime really interesting and different. People that watch anime are sometimes made fun of and are generally treated unfairly as like they're strange, and while there may be some cases of that, many fans of the medium are just normal people. Welcome to Ham Dump! Y'all ready for this? This past Friday, the Hamped Up traveled to see a Springfield Thunderbirds hockey game at the Mass Mutual Center. The Thunderbirds are playing in their inaugural season and are the AHL affiliate of the Florida Panthers. The Thunderbirds took on the Syracuse Crunch and fell 4-3 after a late comeback fell short. The Crunch opened up with a 4-0 lead before Springfield scored three goals in a span of less than five minutes to cut the lead to one. After the game, I caught up with head coach Jordy Kinnear and forward defenseman Senna Akalatse to talk about their thoughts on the game. Well, they, they capitalized on the opportunities. I, I didn't think uh, either team early on had much jump. There weren't more, uh, many chances either way. And you give them a couple of chances, a two-on-one and a breakaway, and they have the skill level to capitalize. Uh, uh, and you can't, you can't chase the game. We chased it. So what changes did you make to jumpstart the comeback there at the end of the third period? Well, it's just guys sticking with it, and I thought they battled to the end. Their power play stepped up and got us some uh, momentum. That's the the job of the power play to create momentum for ourselves, and uh, you know, gave ourselves a chance. But again, as a four nothing leads, a tough one to come back from. Uh, I mean, every night we're there, we battle every single night. Like uh, we're a young team, so I mean, it's it's tough to lose those games. We just got to keep moving forward. But uh, it's good to see that we have that uh, resiliency. Um, on our team, and guys never give up, though we'll give it to the end, so that's good to see. And uh, the statement got pretty loud once you guys started the comeback, so how does it help your momentum playing in front of the home fans here? Oh, it definitely helps a lot when there's a big crowd in the in the stands. Uh, gives you that extra oomph that you need. Um, definitely helps. I mean, the crowd's been good this year. So there were a couple of defensive lapses early in the third period. What do you think your team needs to do to stay focused for a full 60 minutes? Oh, I think we stay focused for 60 minutes. I just think uh, mistakes that we make uh, are costly because we don't score a lot of goals. And, and again, you can't, uh, a team that doesn't score a lot of goals, it's tough to come back from 4 nothing. So we got to do a better job capitalizing on our chances. So now we're not chasing the game, the other team's cha uh, chasing us. In other sports news, both the boys and girls basketball teams qualified for the postseason last week. Both the boys and girls track teams are 10-1 and one and have their final race of the regular season on Friday night. The boys swimming and diving team is 6 and 3 and the girls swimming and diving team is 3 and 6. The wrestling team has a match on Wednesday night against Westfield for their senior night. The ski team has their final PBAC North race of the season at Berkshire East next week and finally the East Hampton ice hockey team is 4-8 and 1 on the season. Political comedy has become a staple of late night television in the beginning of the 21st century. Many turn to shows such as The Daily Show with Trevor Noah and Real Time with Bill Maher for information as well as entertainment. The Pew Research Center published a study in February of 2016 that showed that 25% of U.S. adults had obtained some information about the 2016 election from a late night comedy show. 3% listed late night comedy as most helpful, about as much as print newspapers. Originally airing in 1996, The Daily Show has been one of America's most watched late night shows. The Daily Show currently hosts one particularly popular segment, Jordan Klepper Fingers the Pulse, which garners millions of views on YouTube alone. In October, Klepper attended a rally for Donald Trump in Pennsylvania, where he interviewed Trump supporters, such as this one, about Donald Trump's locker room talk. 
People here knew Trump's comments weren't sexual assault. They were something completely different. Just ask this man who conducted a highly scientific survey. I got news for you. I asked a lot of women here, and half of them would love to have their pussy snatched by, by Trump. I got news for you. Mm -hmm. That is news to me. I'd like to grab Al Qaeda by the pussy and shove some Yankee Doodle Dandy right up its ass. But we at the transcript noticed something a bit odd about this particular Trump supporter. You supporting Jill Stein? Oh yeah, that's a logical conclusion. With all these <laughs> buttons. Yes, I am. How many events of Jill Stein's have you been to? Not many this year, probably seven or eight. So who really is this man? The Trump supporter on The Daily Show or the button selling Jill Stein enthusiast? I interviewed him and found out. Oh, that was a trip. I got to yeah. say, that was, that was different. Well, I'm Bennett Weiss, and I live in beautiful Newburgh, New York. You never supported Donald Trump. Absolutely throughout. not. When Bernie uh, lost, uh, Jill Stein uh, seemed to me to be the logical go-to person. One of my main modus operandi of campaigning, and I've been campaigning for many years, is buttons. I make and sell buttons. My son uh, was... Uh, interested in following in my footsteps to some extent. He really disappointed me when he told me that he was going to uh, do buttons at a Donald Trump rally in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. So I figured, let me go out there and, uh, and, and just walk around. But I was interested in listening to the conversations on the line. I wanted to chime in, but I was self-conscious because I didn't want to be seen as an intruder. I, didn't, I wanted to sort of blend in with him. So I went back to my son's display. I took a couple of buttons and went about my business. I heard one particular group talking about uh, Muslims and how, you know, hey, we're finally going to do something about it. I figured, OK, that, this was my chance to you know, join the conversation. So I, I, I told the guy something like, uh, excuse me for interrupting. Uh, but I happen to agree with you completely. Anyway, while I'm doing my shtick with these, with these Trump supporters, a guy comes up to me with a clipboard. It says, excuse me, would you like to be interviewed? My newfound Trump buddies pat me on the back, and they say, yeah, yeah, go for it, go ahead, yeah, do it. I saw the guy, recognized him, so I said, uh-oh, daily show. All kinds of bells went off in my head. So do you think at any point Jordan Klepper or The Daily Show knew that you weren't a yes, real Trump supporter? Yes, absolutely. I, I got my Trump friends with me there, so I have to sort of stay in character. Good guy on my shoulder saying, don't do this, but the devil on my own, it's fun, go ahead, it's gonna be fun, and I like fun. So I figured, what the hell, I'll have some fun, right? But I still think that that type of, what I did was part of a real serious problem. It's all designed to, you know, to, to convey a message, to get across a point, the point being, Trump supporters are stupid, laughable, and we're so above them. Even, even these people that I ran into there who were um, of the caricature that I you know, portrayed, even people like that, they, underneath it all, they had stories to tell. When we confuse you know, uh, TV with reality, and on a show like that, it's especially uh, egregious because, you see, it, there's a double le level here. It's like, okay, you, everyone sort of knows who's watching it that they're, they have a bias and that their real objective is, is laughs, not mm -hmm. news, okay? Right. But there's also a subconscious level where this is news to these people. This is what they're, this is what's in their head now. Would I do it again? I'm gonna say I'll take the fifth on that. <laughs> Bennett Weiss's story raises some important issues. Where is the line between comedy and journalism? What obligation do comedic outlets have to follow rules of journalistic ethics, such as vetting their sources? As we enter a new era of rampant mistrust of journalists, these questions should be on everyone's mind. Thanks for watching. By the way, Carl Wilkins will be coming to Northampton High School Auditorium on February 7th at 7 p.m. He will be giving a lecture on the Rwandan genocide and social justice issues.